question. What would possess someone to sleep outside in a hammock in shorts and a t-shirt when it's below freezing? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. I was reading an article, and the article talked about Aborigines in Australia. And during the day in Australia, it gets it gets really hot, and they don't wear a whole lot. And then during the at night, out in the middle of the desert, it gets really cold, and they lay, lay awake all night, shivering themselves, uh, shivering to generate body heat. Uh, in in the article, it said that there was no loss in sleep quality. They got full REM sleep all night long, and they were woke up fully refreshed and happy. And the article further said that. Westerners can learn to do this, but it's a bit of a painful process. Now, I've been doing experiments for, for a while, and I have a couple of criteria. One of them is it can't be fatal, and number two is I want it to be as inexpensive as possible. Um, it's a hammock. It's not going to cost anything. But the fatal part, I did some looking into that. And so, again, the, the idea was I wanted to get to that point where I could sleep through the night shivering the whole time without ever waking up or having loss of quality of sleep. But I wanted to make sure it wasn't fatal, so I went online and googled, could you freeze to death in your sleep? And the answer came back and said, no, you're, you'll shiver yourself awake. To which I responded, well, yeah, but what if sleeping through the shivering is the whole, is the whole point of the experiment? That begins to encroach on the experiments can't be fatal restriction that I've given myself. On conditions when the weather is right, I'll go outside and I'll sleep in a hammock. And I will wear nothing more than what I am wearing right now. I take it back, there is one more piece of, one more item of clothing that I wear when I go outside. <clears throat> take a t-shirt and I wrap it around my head. Just to keep my head from, from getting too cold. I started cutting my hair short not too long ago. Not only that, it's a pretty snazzy pirate look, if I do say so myself. All right, so that's enough of the enough of the preamble. Let me walk you through the setup, and then I'll go into into the results, and then also the specifics about under what conditions will I go outside, and under one under what conditions will I not go outside. Okay, here we are walking through the door outside. Tonight's going to be a little bit of a special night because it is raining. Okay, here is the. Uh, Here's the famous hammock down below it. That is the, uh, it's kind of a thin quilt. That's the, uh, that's the bedding that I use. I have a rolled up towel that I use as a pillow. And that's it. Phone charger, etc. And beyond that, I am out in the, uh, great outdoors. Oh my goodness, is it snowing? Nope, it's not snowing, it's just raining. So I, I checked, and it is, uh, it's not 55, it's 49 degrees outside. So I am now all, all hammocked up. Tonight it may not be cold enough to matter. Um, so as far as the lower limit goes, I mean, I don't want to do anything crazy. So I set a lower limit at 25 degrees. If, it's, if the forecast is below 25 degrees outside, um, I'll just stay inside. The other, it, more commonly what happens is it's too windy. It's too windy, and I just go ahead and and uh, stay in the house. And so um, that's it. So so what what have the results been? Well, I, I was trying to experiment with shivering thermogenesis, as it is called. So shivering thermogenesis means shivering to generate body heat, and you can read about that up up this other link. Um, but it was kind of a bust. I, I never, I never shivered. You know, I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and uh, you know, there's, there's nothing. You know, there's nothing between me and and 25, 30 degree temperatures in the winter, other than a thin layer of hammock material. So you wake up, and the whole side of you feels like a cold slab of beef or whatever. Uh, but you're not shivering. You know, so what happens is it activates, your brown fat activates, and uh, brown fat, and that, again, there's a whole video here that I, where I talk about it. You use the same mechanism to generate body heat that a hibernating animal uses. So you generate body heat and you just stay, you stay, your core temperature stays warm. 
now your your perimeter can get cold and your exterior layers can get get cold but make, you know you don't drop core temperature you stay warm and so in, in that sense the experiment was a bit of a bust i never did shiver <laughs> the whole way through the night like i had decided would you know that i had set as a goal for myself that 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 failed but what happens though is you get used to being out in the cold and so like i, I think i wore a coat once uh last winter and that's when i was going to a movie with my daughter you know i didn't want to potentially uh freeze while walking back to the car but yeah whatever that's the only time i wore it i was out showing snow i was out walking to and from stores and, and so on now here's the interesting here's an interesting thing is i was i was in t-shirts the whole time i think what triggers the brown fat act i think the brown fat is somewhat activated by the the cold feeling on your skin the reason i say that is i didn't shiver during the winter unless i put on a sweatshirt if i put a sweatshirt on and went into the grocery store i would start shivering uncontrollably i don't know why it was um my what i suspect it was is that uh um my my body wasn't able to sense via my skin that it was cold it, it felt uh it felt warm because of the sweatshirt and so i didn't generate heat and so next thing you know i'm standing there shivering in the aisle and i had to take my sweatshirt off and then it was fine <laughs> I, I don't know how that that happens um anyway that's that's about it that's the the hammock experiment that some of you may have heard about tonight it's only probably going to get down into the upper 30s um oh one other thing i should mention is I don't feel obligated to stay out the entire night. I do stay out for at least one sleep cycle, which is an hour and a half. Um, and uh, it's it's crazy because you're. I, I have a you know a Fitbit sleep tracker, and it um, in the morning it reports on quality of sleep, and I do better when I'm sleeping outside than when I do inside, especially in the. It, it categorizes it, it categorizes it into deep sleep, REM sleep, and um, light sleep or regular sleep or whatever. But in in deep sleep, um, I, I usually when I'm cold, it's I, I get a lot more deep sleep time, and that's the, the part of sleep when you're restoring, uh, doing physical restoration. REM is mental restoration. Anyway, just for whatever that's worth. And then you know if I've been out for an hour and a half and it's and it's cold. I'm not shivering, but I, you know, I kind of get tired of it. <laughs> I'll, I'll go inside and, and uh, you know, and just go back to sleep. And it's it's amazing how easy it is to fall asleep when it's cold. Because when you're cold, your body naturally uh, makes melatonin. Melatonin is a sleepy chemical. Um, and so you just fall right to sleep. Usually I'll listen to a podcast and get about two minutes into it, and then I'm gone. Um, That's it. Um, go ahead and click subscribe. I'll, I've got more experiments coming up. Not all of them involve some form of uh, self-torture, but most of them seem to. I'll torture if you don't enjoy it. I kind of like it. It's kind of fun. Anyway, click subscribe. Uh, feel free to forward. Feel free to comment. Let me know what you think. Um, maybe don't let me know what you think if it's too critical. Talk to you later.